Welcome in guys, my name is Pete, but you guys can call me Pete. It is finally time. The time has arrived for us to talk about the Crow 2024 remake, which is out for some days already. And I took one for the team. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna subject myself to watch that. I watched the movie and let me tell you, it's bad. It's not entirely bad, okay? It's not fair. There are like some good things. The soundtrack, cool. They were able to find like good bands that still represent a little bit of what it is, the essence of the, the, the whole vibe. The action scenes are pretty gnarly, pretty badass, uh, kind of even gore. All the actings are very good. Bill Skarsgård has like a good acting in that one. I'm kind of sad because the, the role is pretty bad. Story, kind of shallow. Things happen out of nowhere and they aren't very meaningful. I think the approach here is more of a superhero vibe. Than, the, than anything else. Again, I haven't uh, re read the comics, so I don't know if it's, it's quite right, like, but that is quite appropriate. That's not like the matter. The matter is really like when it comes to the plot. The plot was quite okay, but the execution was pretty bad. I didn't have like the wall, the, the deep connection that we were expecting, that this story kind of like asks for. The ending was pretty disappointing, but Let's go. As I told you guys in the reaction of the, to the trailer, I was gonna try to like come to this movie, like the Brendan Lee movie never happened. It's like the first crow ever that we have here now to see if I was able to like, enjoy. Cause I'm a die hard fan of the 1994 version of the crow. Cause uh, it, it is just, it just speaks so much. As I told you, as I said in the other video, uh, it just speaks so much and so loud uh to the gothic subculture right it's, it's just like a very important movie for us for most of us and i tried to do that i didn't i didn't quite succeed i was able to watch the movie and not like keep comparing from now on spoilers are gonna happen right spoilers are gonna happen so the movie starts and you and there's like this whole bloody screen happening like kind of like out of a deftones you just get like captivated by that you just get like oh my god this is gonna be good this is gonna be good. It jumps to the past, shows little Eric Draven there, getting to some place. I don't know if it was his home or, or his trailer or what was that, it's not quite clear. But he gets to this one place and outside of this place, there's a white horse uh, entangled in like barbed wire. And then it cuts to someone, a lady that is in the trailer, I assume is Eric's mom. No, no details given there. Uh, and she's quite sleeping. I don't know if she's like passing out of drunk or something like that. It's not clear. It's not clear. It's like super fast. And he helps the horse and then he just like pulls the like uh, the barbed wire with his own hands and helps the horse. But the horse ends up dying. And he got like some bruises on his hand. Like he cuts his hand and then that's why he has like uh, scars here. That's a version of the crow that has scars. Uh, you get like a little voiceover saying like when you first met, meet death, that's when you need you you meet sadness and stuff like that. Okay, and then it cuts, and then you don't have anything else from Eric Draven. It cuts straight into the present to Shelly out of nowhere. You don't have anything. You just like what 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 is happening? Shelly and her friends they are like in, in despair. Shelly Shelly wakes up and like it's picking up the phone because uh, they are they are being chased by this one guy because. Of some video. Shelly uh, ends up being caught. She's saying to this one guy, old guy, that is like centuries old. He says that. He's like, I'm centuries old. And he has this one pack with the devil. That's why you can see he has like superpowers. He can whisper someone uh, into ending their own existence. And then he stays alive. Uh, the person's soul is sent to hell as a payment to the devil because he has a deal with the devil. So the main evil dude in this movie, he's in Rogue, centuries old because he has a, a, a pact with the devil. Shelly, in order to not be caught by the evil dudes, by the evil corp, she runs into the cop, into the cops with some drugs, like a lot of drugs in her bag. She gets sent to the, to the rehab or prison, that's already of like not being caught, that uses like the police to not be caught by the evil corp. And then it comes to this one little dude in the prison, the guy is full of tattoos, a haircut, is a cool haircut, like alternative person. He's being bullied, but it's all part of a, like a therapy group and he can, he can, he cannot get his feelings out. Psychiatrist there really makes it clear that that's why he had anger issues and he, he was into drugs. So, like, 
that's our area driven. It's a drug addict. It's like someone that like seems to have had a rough life. It doesn't tell in the movie. It doesn't mention any part of his story, right? The whole movie surrounds Shelly. And then Shelly arrives to the to the to the rehab and they, they meet in the rehab. Alright? They meet in the re rehab. They start like exchanging some some stares and you, you can see that there's like something like some attraction going between them, which is pretty cool. It was very, very well uh, represented there. But they do not know each other. Okay? And that's a very, very strong point here. They do not know each other. They met in the in the prison slash rehab. They finally start talking. Because uh, Shelly approaches him uh, during lunch. They start talking and they start hanging out and they start like having this, this, uh, they start approaching. No romance yet. Nothing happened. He starts drawing her, and this all happens in like three or four, five days or top a week. Because meanwhile, they find Shelly's friend body in the river. Okay, that makes Shelly's mom discover where Shelly is, and they go with one of Vincent's uh, employees to get Shelly. In the, in the rehab. Shelly sees uh, uh, her and she goes like, I can't, I cannot go, I cannot go with them, they're gonna kill me, they're gonna do something to me. And then our little e hero here, Eric, decides to help her to escape, because he knows a way to escape from uh, from the prison he had. And last minute, he decides to escape with her. That's when story starts. When they're escaping the, the prison, amazing scene, okay, gotta say that, because Joy Division is the soundtrack there. And that made my heart, my goth heart, very happy, right? It, it's very cool, it's very cool, very cool. And after after escaping, they go to this uh, Shelly's friend apartment, which is where, um, which is a very rich place. So they start making out, still dirty, and they they mention that they are still like uh, stinky and 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 whatnot. So they start making out, they take a bath together, they, they have sex, uh, lots of sex. They have lots, lots, lots of sex. They have lots of drugs. Oh, lots of alcohol as well. And by drugs, I'm not talking about marijuana, okay? Because in my opinion, that's not a, a harmful uh, thing. But I'm talking like heavy, heavy duty things, all right? Ha heavy duty drugs. Traitors is a, the soundtrack at this moment, which is pretty cool. Another good touch. In this moment, I was like, okay, what is happening here? The whole character now, it's being portrayed as like an alternative person, rough background that has a drug problem. So that's pretty dark. And it kind of points in the direction of everyone that has tattoos and a different style that they have like rough lives and they are into drugs. That's literally what is portrayed there. It's really bad. Uh, okay, and after after all the sex and drugs and sex and drugs and uh, uh, they, they have this one little moment where they, they're talking about love. He says that her aura attracted him, which is a very, I think that the, like one of the most romantic moments in the movie. Uh, cause it's not like something material, it, it shows that like, their connection is gonna be spiritual. Cause again, they know each other for seven days, or something. So they spend like, what I would say that is like, four more days, three, four more days, uh, living life, low profile, but at the same time, not low profile, cause they are hiding from the low carp, uh, from the evil carp, uh, which is not called evil carp, by the way, that's, there's the name that I'm giving. So they, they keep hiding for 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 like some days, which is not quite hiding because they go to public places, they go to clubs, uh, they use more drugs, and they have more sex. And then at this one night, they go to this one club, and uh, Shelly sees Dom, which is another one of our friends, which didn't get caught back in the in the start of the movie. And he says, we need to leave town, we need to leave town. So Shelly just like gets Eric and get like, oh, we're just in despair. We need to go there and we need to go to, to your place. And they go to Eric's place. So that's when the thing starts, okay? So, so far we got like just the background of oh, how we are gonna get there, which for me, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like portraying the whole drug story. Uh, Eric it has a very, very, very uh, fragile vibe. He seems like someone that really needs help. He's, he has a very fragile vibe, like that at any, mo at, that at any moment, he's gonna break. Uh, and that's when they get caught. 
Shelly gets murdered in front of him with the with the like you guys saw in the in the music in, in the in the trailer. Uh, she gets like uh, murdered in front of him. He dies as well, and then he goes to Purgatory Afterlife or whatever uh, you wanna call. And he's so confused. He doesn't understand where he is. He's like an all all destroyed place. And uh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. He's greeted by this old guy that says a lot of stuff, like uh, gives the whole speech about the crow, like uh, how the crow carries uh, souls and, and, and if there's something linger, he's gonna help. And then he's sent back out of nowhere. He just got gets to the afterlife. He's sent back. He, he's confused, he doesn't know. When he's, he's back, he gets in a fight with a cop because he's lo looking for Shelly. He gets in a fight with, uh, with a cop. Super action fight. He gets... Beaten off, dude. The crow has no power yet. Crow has no power there. He gets beaten off, gets shot, thinks he dies again, but he doesn't, okay? So he gets stabbed as well, and then, then we get like some very gore stuff, because he has to put his intestines back. I, I approve that. I like that kind of stuff. I like that kind of gore sh uh, shit. But he was very weak, and he was getting beaten off, okay? But he was able to manage the fight, uh, gets out of the building, sees Shelly, Jumping out of a building, which is not Shelly, it's basically just his mind thinking about Shelly. Dies again. Gets into the afterlife one more time. We got two times already. He's confused. He talks to the to the Green Reaper, to the Crow, to God, whatever is that figure. It's not explicit in the movie. The guy explains that he has to make things right. Uh, and he goes like, okay, because his love is pure. Strong point on that. Guys, his love is pure. He has known Shelly for seven days, even though... He was connected to her aura and attracted to her aura. I don't think seven days is enough to feel love. To feel the true love. To call that a very strong bound. Like seven days only. You do not know the person. And that doesn't fall into the like Hollywood magic of like, like first love or stuff. It's not. It's not. It's too soon. It's completely out of reality. It's completely out of like what... Now comparing the cruel love story is about, which is a strong, true love. Got me thinking, maybe love is shallow now. That moment got me thinking that. And I got like, oh, God damn it. They just know each other for seven days. That's when things get weird. Okay, so they, they, the Green Reaper, I don't, I don't believe that I'm saying this. But the Green Reaper, or I'm going to call it Green, Green Reaper, says, uh, if you make things right in the physical world, you and her can have your life back. And that, like, for me, that is so bad. Because, like, uh, what is so strong about the comparing again, what is so strong about the OG one is that it, it's definitive. It's, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this not to save but I'm doing this for justice, you know? And this one, we got this whole uh, hero vibe going on, like, I can save both of us. And, and one very strong thing that, that the Green Reaper says is, if your love is pure, you are gonna heal and you're gonna have the power of a god to get things right. So he gets back and Vincent already knows that he is back from the dead. And Vincent shows interest in him so he tells everyone to capture him. So what I felt at this moment, and that was proven right, is that he wants his blood to be immortal. Eternally immortal, because it's the crow blood. That starts the crow quest in trying to get revenge. And he tries to like get, get, dig, dig up some info, because again, he doesn't know her. He doesn't know her past. He doesn't know wh why she died. He doesn't know why he died. You know, he was with a girl for seven, for 10 days, and they died. And after after digging up and finding Samifo, one of the things he find out is the video, which was the video of the start of, of the movie that says that it would condemn Vincent. So he finds this video, and that is a video of actually, uh, there's a video of Vincent whispering to Shelly, and Shelly getting getting under this hypnosis and killing someone. So Shelly stabs someone for Vincent. And then his love gets shaken. It's not a pure love anymore. He gets in a fight gets shot by a shotgun because people are trying to capture him but he decides to fight because he thinks he can heal but he is not immortal anymore so the crow dies for the third time because he can't heal anymore because his love is not pure and i'm gonna repeat that and that's stupid that's fucking stupid because he got doubt 
He got doubts. As I'm adding his stuff, I'm gonna zoom it up. He's on a quest for a girl that he met 10 days before. And his love is already not not pure anymore. And he gets sent to the to to, to the afterlife. He has a discussion with the with the Green Reaper, because the Green Reaper says, You screwed up. You you lost the only chance that you had to make things right. So you screwed up. You don't have and he goes like my soul for hers then the green reaper says like you're gonna, gonna not gonna be able to have a life with her and he goes like yeah but uh, she's gonna have a life strong strong meaning there i appreciate totally overreacting okay so the crow the, the the green reaper goes like okay you're gonna have the blood of the crow now and uh, that's a very sick shot that happens when he gets the blood of the crow because he gets like all in, in black stuff and like that's when he becomes the crow and May I say that? We are 70%, 80% into the movie already. That's when the crow is the crow. So it drags the whole story. And then he becomes a crow just at almost the end of the movie, you know? And then he gets back. Uh, he uses... I don't know if you actually can do that. And I think that was quite wild because he uses tattooing as makeup an easter egg from the first movie because the first movie his makeup was uh because of the theater so you have like the the, the it was inspired by the sadness max and he has the the sadness and happiness cry now uh laugh later to, uh, theater mask tattooed here so it, uh, it was a cool easter egg that he put there but anyway he uses the the the, the tattoo ink as makeup and it it, it draws here it's like draws here and like all the, the makeup that you guys have seen and he becomes a badass out of nowhere now he's badass now he's kicking ass now he's getting shot and he's like i am gonna fulfill this quest 70 percent of the movie he gets into the main quest goes after the guys that, uh, that he assumes that everyone is in the everyone responds with is in this one theater he gets like i don't know he kills i don't know i don't know 50 people because they are all cops, or like, they are all like cops or security guards going after him. He gets like shot like a hundred times in the theater. Nobody that is in the audience hears a fucking thing. I've heard the shot before. It's loud. I think it's a wakizashi, which is a sword for seppuku. If it is that, it is a very strong meaning that he's using that to kill everyone, you know, to slash. So it's like a very GTA scene there. Dude. It's a very GTA scene. He gets like broken bones and put bones back in place it gets like all gory and like every everything is just like so action like so it ends up killing all the bad dudes there vincent was not there though but he gets the info that vincent is in his country uh home all right after killing everyone that is evil in the theater and nobody in the crowd because there, there was a play happening in this theater all right there was a play happening and nobody nobody heard a thing nobody in the crowd got it okay that is okay so the the, the play ends he invades the stage with two beheaded heads and drops and then that's when i got like wait 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 why is he a fucking psycho now why is he scaring all those innocents that are just watching a play what kind of what is that like the crow was supposed to be pure you know, like that was, it was a very strong meaning. And again, I, I, I told that in the, in the trailer. Because when you see Sarah in the, in the OG, in the 1994 Crow, Sarah has a strong role of me, of showing how pure the Crow is. Because he's not a psycho. He's a guy seeking for revenge because of love. And that's not the case here. He's a fucking psycho. He's a psycho mode now. Badass Crow is psycho mode. So he goes to the to the to the, the country country house, fights Vincent. Vincent almost kills him, uh, whispers him, almost steal his <laughs> own immortality and power. So he kills Vincent, sends he, Vincent to the afterlife. In the afterlife, he, kill, he keeps fighting Vincent, and Vincent is finally dragged to hell. And that was a very badass scene. I gotta say that that was very 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 cool. The black black water that is in the ground. Some hands just get Vincent like this and like take him to hell so that was very badass i gotta give that i gotta give the good things this something like i think it's shelly soul appears they have like a very very mo good moment and a romantic moment and they are talking about uh, life and he's glad that he she's gonna have a life and that his love is gonna 
leave through her and she's like no but i want with you if it's not with you i don't want it and they kiss and then shelly is resurrected by a doctor and who the doctor is actually uh the green reaper or god i don't know at this moment i thought it was god so shelly has a musical career lives his life uh, voiceover of the Eric Draven kicks in. Our love is gonna live through you. My love is gonna live through you. The end. My God, how was I was disappointed at that ending? All right, why? Cause he met this girl, spent ten days with her, dies, gives his soul in, in exchange for her soul to stay alive. She gets back to life. She gets back to life. This dude in three months is not is gonna be nothing but a crush of ten days for her. His existence for her, existence for her is known. It's like nothing. It's meaningless. And like you can come here and say like, oh, it was an altruistic act. He was doing for her. He was doing for her happiness because he loved her so much. Uh, and you know, I, I thought about that. I thought about that, but I was like, that's not what the crow is about. That's not what the crow is about. That's not what the story of the crow is about. So what I felt is like, uh, they tried a different approach with a different plot, but they didn't like all the bad decisions that they could make. They they made because the the movie drags so much to something happen. Like it, it drags so much to actually bring the crow, and when it brings, you just like a cycle, and the, the cycle just gets like yeah no he like if you get like her lifeline her lifeline is literally like this yeah she was a piano prodigy her mom made a, a deal with the, the with vincent so he he would have her daughter i forgot to mention that i'm sorry guys she gets in trouble she goes to rehab meets guy run away with guy dies gets back to death from death because then it's kind of like if time went back and she was waking up from an od when she gets back she's like waking up from an od he dies from the od though and then she lives her, her life she lives her life she has a whole life you know who was eric draven in the end just a, a two for her to get back to life I, I cannot watch all of that and not compare with the first one like the 1994 version it's so romantic it, he, he you can feel i feel that that's a strong movie because you can really feel what he feels if you take everything out of the 1994 and do not compare them this the crow 2024 remake as a standalone, it is a bad movie that is fun to watch because of the whole action and the gore. The plot is not what is gonna take you. You're gonna face palm so many times, right? Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review or, or this spoiling or me telling uh, the movie. I don't know. I watched The Crow 2024, so you guys don't have to. Don't forget to check the music channel as well, Creepy Music. We're gonna have music reactions. We're trying hard to crow on this channel as well, which is a variety channel. And we got streams on twitch.tv slash creepies as well from Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. GMT. Last but not least, don't forget to drink your coffee and cast your lighter. <laughs>